Hello, welcome to my uh, PowerPoint on the black flies, which is called the Simulidae. Uh, this PowerPoint is done by me, Julio C. Benitez Jr. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So the introduction starts off with basically the uh, basic information on what a black fly is. It starts off uh, introducing basically the shape of the black fly, which has robust built humpbacked thorax, cigar-shaped antenna, and prominent venation on the wings. As you can see, it does have that of the humpbacked thorax with a hard shell on top. It does have little antennae that do look uh, that of a, sh a cigar shape. And there is uh, venation on the wings in the beginning portion of, uh, of the wing. Adult females do require blood meals to mature their eggs or to prepare for oogenesis. Uh, larvae and pupae live as aquatic insects. And there is also a huge diversity of black flies uh, everywhere in, on Earth except in Antarctica, some islands of the high Arctic, and open ocean islands like Hawaii or that of the Bahamas. General identification and morphology. We do start off with uh, four stages, and the first phase would be that of the egg. Uh, the egg is that of an elliptical, elliptical or ovoid shape. It is covered in a gelatinous matrix and does have a cream color. It does darken as time goes on. The egg also contains that of a micropile, which is used for spermatozoa to enter to effect fertilization. Phase 2, which is the larvae, uh, typically has a um, different or a diverse, the larvae does have an elongated body, a well sclerotized body, pair of labral fans, and two prolegs. One proleg is near the head, while the other is typically at the end of the larvae. Phase 3 is the pupa. Inside, the head and the legs do reform into that of what it should look like as an adult. It also does create wings. On the outside, the cocoon is made out of silk made from the larva, and respiratory organs or gills are formed uh, outside the, the cocoon. There is a diversity of cocoons formed depending on the species, either covering only the abdomen or the whole body. Phase 4 is the adult phase. Robust and compact, built with short appendages, and does resemble that of an American bison or buffalo. It has also been given or coined the name buffalo net. Wingspan of 5 to 10 millimeters. Male and female heads are shaped differently, as you can see here in this picture. Males do lack teeth. They do have an arced thorax for indirect flight muscles and scler Sclerotized abdomen allows for flexible mating and accommodate egg development. Two classifications of the black fly. The first one is Parasimilinae and Similinae. It would be the second one. In the Parasimilinae, there are five evolutionary basal species of black flies. These black flies are non blood sucking black flies and they live more in the northern hemisphere. The Similinae, which are basically the vast majority of the black fly, do have about 18 evolutionary basal uh, species. Blood, they are blood-sucking black flies, and they are worldwide. The only black flies that do suck blood are that of females. Sibling species are a pair of groups of genetically closely related species which are often morphologically indistinguishable but are reproductively isolated. These sibling species of black flies are discovered by detailed study of the certain large banded chromosome. With new bands of chromosome comes new species of black flies. These are basically going to be called species specific due to the chromosome pattern that they are that they have. Parasites may that also transmit may also have sibling species as well. Just like any other organism, the biology is important of the black fly. 
They are separated into four categories being life, history, and development, habitats of the immature, natural enemies, and adult habits. The first one that we are going to cover is that of the life history and development of the black fly. The black flies are holometabolous insects, which undergo basically a complete morph uh, metamorphosis, which include the egg, larva, pupae, imago, or adult. Insects that only brood one, once per year are called uniholtine, and insects that have multiple broods per year are called multivoltine. Typically, univoltine insects do live longer than that of multivoltine insects due to the multiple broods per year. This takes a lot of energy from them and hence gives them a shorter lifespan. All pre-adult life stages develop in flowing water. Let us now cover the pre-adult life stages. The first three stages of life are the egg, larva, and pupa. Eggs are laid near flowing water. Hatching does occur between a few days to a year. These all depend on the position of the eggs, the time of year, and also the species of the black fly. Larva. The larva emerges from egg and attaches on a substrate. A substrate can be twigs, falling leaves, anything that could uh, sustain itself on a flat surface. Some substrates are also man-made objects like plastic, foil, and so forth. Some of the larvae are also considered uh, foracy. The definition of foracy is an association between two organisms in which one travels on the body of another without being that of a parasite. Even though it may look like a parasite, it is not a parasite for the other organism. Two examples that the chapter describes is that of the crab and a prawn. Filter feeding is necessary for the larva to feed on. It does use its labral fans as shown in the picture right now in order to feed on particulate matter that the current brings. Defense, jostle for position and molting are also important for the larva. Defense and jostle position moves the larva in a seat position for defense and just to move around. In order for it to defend from predators and also feed from other position from one position to another. Molting does occur. The average number of moltings would be that of seven. Some do take longer due to poor nutrition. Larva stage may last up to six weeks or more depending on the temperature and species. Pupa. The cocoon is made out of silk which is spun in the water. The pupa does develop gills as breathing organs. These organs may breathe in underwater. Pupa lasts less than a month depending on the temperature and again on species. Emergence is a diurnal phenomenon which happens during the morning. Most black flies are protanderous in which males do emerge a day or two before females in order to get ready for mating. Like any other organism, there are natural enemies to the black fly. There are more parasites than predators. Some predators are birds, fish, and arthropods. Parasites are abundant, which are bacteria, fungi, helicop helicosporidia, ichiosporions, myrmithid, filarial nematodes, mycosporidia, protists, straminopiles, water mites, and viruses. Habitats of the immatures. Basically, anything that is not an adult, being the egg, larva, and pupa. Watercourses of all sizes are colonized, either being permanent or intermittent. Some of the examples that are given in the chapter are enormous rivers, trickles of water, highly productive waterways, examples would be that of beaver ponds or artificial lakes, thundering water falls and other torrential, torrential habitats. Extreme water courses would be that of glacial melt waters, hot springs and subterranean flows. No species has successfully exploited standing water or wave washed shores of large lakes. No black fly develops in brackish water. Adult habits of the black fly are almost exclusively diurnal. They do not emerge at night they usually have their, most of their activities during the day. 
Freshly emerged adults are soft and do seek a resting place in order to harden and tan. Female adults that are emerging from the cocoon get ambushed and also are inseminated before reaching a resting site. Mating behavior of the adult blackflies is called swarming. Adult blackflies drink water and take sugar meals. Energy primarily is used for flight for males, while, while the primary use of energy for females would be the process of oogenesis. All hosts of black flies are mammals and birds. Some are highly host specific, meaning that they only target one specific host, and no black fly is specific to humans. The female black fly feeds on blood. The process starts off with a female black fly landing on a host. It then starts initiating a probe in a specific area using a heat initiating process. It retracts the labella, which would be the main main mouth part, and uses its mandibles to cut the flesh. The lacinae anchors the mouth parts on the wound. The blood meal is taken within three to six min minutes to repletion. Repletion is a condition of being completely full of something, in this case, blood. Blood meal is then directed into the midgut for digestion. Blood is then used for oogenesis. A fly that has deposited its eggs is referred to as parius, whereas one that has never laid eggs is called nulliparius. Females do return to an appropriate habitat to deposit the eggs, an appropriate habitat being that of anything close to a waterway or a water course. There are three oviposition techniques that the female black fly may take in order to deposit the eggs. The first one would be depositing eggs in masses while stationed on a moist object. The second, scattering the eggs in the water a few at a time. And lastly, dabbing eggs onto moist surfaces while descending from a hovering flight. The next portion is the medical and veterinary importance of, of the black flies. We have three categories being that of nuisance and biting problems, trauma, and lastly, disease. Nuisance and biting problems. The primary problem of the black flies is basically their persistence of flying into people's eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. The second would be that of the biting in certain species due to the fact that not all black flies bite. Trauma. Numerous bites can cause physiological stress and physical trauma. Death may occur, especially especially for livestock. Major mortality factor is toxic shock from injection of salivary secretions, known as simuliotoxicosis. Death from black fly attacks have never been documented for human beings, but secondary infections can result in continuous scratching, strategically placed bites that can cause eyes to swell shut. The black fly fever is a generalized term or condition involving fever, nausea, headaches, and swollen lymph nodes. There are three disease organisms. The first one would be filarial nematodes. The next would be protozoas. The last one would be one virus. The most malignant protozoa species is the leukocytosome, which is a malaria-like disease for birds. The less insidious species, trypanosoma. Filarial nematodes is next. There is one genera which infects ducks. There are three other genera that are parasites of mammals. Human parasites are Mantonella and Onchocerca. Most infamous diseases associated with black flies is Onchoceriasis, which is also called river blindness. The last one would be that of viruses. The only virus, VSV. The virus causes lesions in epithelial tissues of livestock with subsequent weight loss, suppressed milk production, and government-imposed restrictions on the movement of animals from one area to another. Controlling these pests, the black fly, have been used in the past before. Use of chemical pesticides, such as one like DDT, work, worked for a while but did create problems. Some of these problems were that the pests were being resistant to the pesticide, and deleterious effects on non-target organisms were occurring. 
Instead of using DDT or other chemical pesticides, BTI or the bacillus is being used as a biological control. Use of natural enemies was also considered as a control for the black flies. Unfortunately, the correlation or the relationship between the natural enemies and black flies were misunderstood and were not working properly. Management of black flies in their larval stage was another method of controlling the pests. Taking care of the larval stage is much easier than that of going around and killing off black flies that may migrate from one place to another. Personal protection methods have been used in the past. Some of these methods were mud, grease, herbal oils, synthetic repellents, smoldering fires called smudges, and shelter. Chemotherapy programs have been used in the past as well. The use of ivermectin, known as mectizan, kills the microfilarial worms in the skin. And with that, thank you for taking your time on watching the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Have a nice day.